Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're, I'm going to be showing you how to do an R410A flare. This is going to be going on a... This flare in particular is going to be used for a mini split air conditioner system. And you can see this uh, line set here came with a standard flare already made up. And you can, But you can see if you look closely at this flare, it's not very high quality. You can see a lot of scratching and just kind of inconsistent look to the inside of this flare. So we're going to be redoing this for two reasons actually. One um, obviously is because this flare isn't the best, but then also because they want us to use the OEM uh, nut, flare nut that came with the mini split. So this is the nut that we're going to be installing, so we'll be removing this standard nut here. So the first thing obviously that you're going to have to do for uh, doing a flare is to trim back your copper pipe. So we're going to cut this back just a little bit and we're going to cut it back far enough here that we're past any imperfections or nicks in the pipe. It looks like there's a nick right there so right about there is going to be where we're going to cut our pipe. Now to you using a high quality pipe cutter uh, like this one is a good idea with a sharp blade because we want to cut this with uh, as minimal uh, deformation to the pipe as possible. We don't want to crush it as we're cutting it. So I like to just get it just barely to the point where it's starting to touch and then begin rotating it around. And we're just going to rotate it three or four times and then tighten it just a little bit and do that process until we get this cut completed. So it could take us a couple minutes to do this. But by going really slow it's going to reduce the amount of burrs that are inside of that pipe. I can feel that we're almost through. Should fall off momentarily. There we go. Now if we take a quick close look, you can see that we don't have much of a burr on the inside. There's a little bit there, but not a whole lot. And so we're actually not going to even use a deburring tool uh, to deburr this because it's so small. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle nose pliers, lock our focus there so you guys can see really well, and we just push our needle nose into the pipe a little bit and gently ream it out and that will just kind of extend that burr outward instead of trying to trim it up. We're just not really going to need to do that with this tiny of a, a burr. But if you needed to deburr it, you could either use a standard deburring tool or very carefully take a knife and clean that burr off the inside just like this and obviously have the have the pipe pointed in a direction where the burrs are not going to fall into the pipe for obvious reasons so I'll go ahead and ream it out just a little bit more now, you don't want to ream it out too much before you put the flare nut on or else it won't go on properly. So go ahead and slide this flare nut on. Now since this is an R410A flare, it is going to be a wider flare, just slightly. So the outside dimension of the flare is a little bit bigger when we're done. But the most important part is just getting this... I gotta pull the copper out of this pipe a little more. The most important part is keeping that inside scratch free and damage free as we go through the process of flaring this. So I'm just going to ream this out a little bit more. Alright, now I'm ready to go ahead and do the flare. Now the flaring tool that we're going to be using is an eccentric flaring tool. I believe that's how we're supposed to pronounce it. But this ver this type of flaring tool basically has a rotational motion that kind of goes around 
and presses the flare into the die in a circular motion. Instead of it just like pushing it out directly with the cone, it kind of rolls it out into the die. And so it tends to do a lot better job at making a nice clean inner surface than a standard typical uh, flaring tool will. So I'd recommend picking up one of these over the standard ones if you can. I'll put a link in the description to this tool as well as any other tools related to this process. So we're going to go ahead and choose our 3 8 inch size and get that set over our pipe. So here's our 3 8 size. Now we're going to extend this through about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. Now this kind of takes a little bit of learning. It's kind of s silly, but uh, that is the amount of material that we want to ultimately flare outward. Uh, so you kind of get the feel of this over the years of doing it and if you end up with one that's too far out the cone will be too big and your flare knot won't go over it or if you end up with one that's too small you'll obviously see that it's too loose inside of there. So uh, the instructions for R410A say to extend it out a tiny bit further so basically they want that cone to be a little bit larger so we're going to go just right about there. We're going to go with right about an eighth inch past the face of the pipe. And we'll take our flaring tool, slide it over, and now we just line that up. You can see there's these, these uh, dimples here in the tool, and that is where we need to get this set and tighten it down. And then that, that will squeeze it together over the copper. And we do tighten it until it's all the way, all the way seated. So you can see right there, it is all the way seated. Maybe we can go a tiny bit more. Right there. Yep, so it's all the way tight there. So now we'll go ahead and do the flare. You guys can see that point coming down. I'll see if I can stabilize it a little bit more. And there it's made contact. You'll see it start to roll that copper out and around. Let's see if I can get you a little bit better view. Right. Now the cool thing about this flare tool is that it tightens down until you've reached the required torque and then when you keep rotating the handle it continues to roll that tip of the flaring tool around which just helps continue to smooth out and make that flare better. Alright so that's about it. Now we'll back it out. And release our handle. There it is. So we'll see, yep, we succeeded perfectly. It slides over there really nice. Let's see if I can get you a good look at the end of it. See that? See how nice and smooth it is on the inside? There's no scratches or other blemishes that will cause our seal to fail. Well, let me just show you this in comparison to the factory one that came on this line set, which is just egregious. Absolutely egregious. See all the scratches and marks from that flare? You would have had to tighten that thing down significantly 
before you would have been able to get this thing to seal. You might have been able to get it, but it just wasn't wasn't really good at all. You don't want to mess around with your flares. So like this is the factory one on the right, and then the one we just did.